Okay, LED light bulb review time. This is IKEA's Lead Air for a 2014. Uh, just like the previous uh, bulb I tore down from IKEA, they're definitely doing something different in terms of their positioning. Uh, they're doing a 600 lumen bulb. For the most part, the industry seems to have settled on 400 and 800 as the break points, so it's a bit unusual. Uh, the efficiency of the bulb is quite poor. It's uh, 60 lumens per watt. Uh, that's uh, near the bottom of the bulbs I've ever torn down. Um, however, uh, their CRI is fairly high, 87. Uh, most of the bulbs that uh, one tears down uh, have a CRI of 80. As always, uh, we will uh, take a look at its performance, and then I'll tear it apart. Okay, light distribution pattern. Uh, I have LED light bulbs are all over the place. Some are good emulations of incandescence, and some are just wild. Uh, this one follows in the wild category. It's got... Um, two peaks on the side of the bulb, and that's I presume because this acrylic diffuser is pushing a lot of light out in that direction, and there's great dark spots, and then there's a bit of light in the front. But you can actually see that, actually, when you turn the bulb on, you can see there's a, there are clear bands that show up on the bulb on the edges, so uh, a very poor emulation of uh, incandescent, and uh, yeah, I'm not really sure why you'd actually want a light which has these big bright bands, so uh, funny looking bulb, funny distribution, I haven't seen this one ever before. Okay, flicker test, light bulb, uh, solar cell, and uh, a waveform, of course, on an oscilloscope. Classic 120 hertz pattern, this one, this bulb does flicker, uh, of course you can do better. Uh, and if you turn the dimmer down, actually, as the light gets lower and lower, the flicker actually increase at a peak, and then decreases. So, um, yeah, you can definitely buy better bulbs with a lower flicker performance. Okay, dimmer test, uh, two kinds of dimmers out there. There's dimmers that predate LED light bulbs, and... Uh, I'm sure they're in lots of homes. They look like this often. Uh, and there's a whole other class of dimmers uh, that actually now are rated for LED light bulbs. And they actually do have different behaviors. And this particular bulb um, really demonstrates it nicely. Uh, first up, we have the, the standard dimmer. Uh, and you can see, for example, light meter reads between 65 and 300 and something. Which obviously is uh, clearly the bulb is dimmable. Uh, we'll switch over though to the uh, LED based dimmer and uh, we'll see that the range is actually quite a bit wider. Okay, same setup. I got this little jig here trying to hold the bulb in relatively the same position because you can see each dimmer has a slightly bit wi different wiring in it. Uh, here we now go from the 300 and something, 360 bit brighter. Uh, but you can see that we can bring the bulb down uh, dramatically lower in terms of uh, intensity until it actually glows just barely on um, 14. Okay, uh, this bulb, like uh, a lot of LED bulbs, has some text that this is not usable in an enclosed light fixture. And I presume that's because the heat would build up too fast and that would shorten the life of the electronics. However, uh, I do have a lot of light fixtures which are enclosed and uh, from an engineering viewpoint I'm wondering what life expectancy I'll reduce by putting a bulb in a light fixture. Um, called reliability engineering. Uh, I have some thermocouples, of course, and a meter which, of course, towards the temperature uh, in centigrade. I've uh, attached a thermocouple to the base of the bulb here. And uh, I'll start out here. This is a, obviously a, a non-enclosed fixture. In fact, it's the most thermally advantageous fixture because uh, all the heat, of course, wants to rise. And uh, I should expect that the electronics in here uh, will stay the coolest. Anyways, I'll see what the different temperature rises are under uh, three different scenarios and then pull out some data sheets and uh, try to get a sense of uh, how much reliability or how much lifetime I reduce a bulb by running it uh, in an enclosed fixture. Okay, it's been running for a bit and it reaches a thermal equilibrium of 4 degrees centigrade. Uh, that's 21 uh, degrees above ambient. Okay, enclosed light fixture. There's a glass globe here and obviously metal tops. So there's no place for uh, heat to escape. It builds up inside the fixture and I presume this is why there's a comment that the bulb shouldn't be used this kind of fixture, but um, if we look at the uh, temperature reading now, we can see that it's risen quite high, uh, 89 degrees. So that's 67 degrees higher than the ambient. And here's the third fixture. It's a, a desk lamp, and uh, its temperature rose to 78 degrees. Okay, reliability. Uh, obviously, we measured uh, three data points uh, on the bulb, one sitting in the most advantageous open fixture, then a... Uh, Slightly more disadvantageous bulb upside down, but still open, and then of course that enclosed fixture offering uh, the highest uh, temperature rise on the bulb's uh, surface. Um, now, 
in reliability engineering, what you'd have to do is you have to go through the data sheets of all the components and then multiply the reliabilities together. And that's a little tricky. You know, for example, the capacitor here, uh, ASHI, uh, it's inside the assembly. I can't find a good uh, data sheet on it because um, the vendors are not very forthcoming. However, here's a vendor uh, which was much more forthcoming. This is a reliability data sheet for an electrolytic capacitor from uh, a vendor which does publish their data. And you can sort of read it. It's, it's a log graph. Um, now, for example, the vendor, uh, IKEA, says this bulb is suitable for operation up to 4 degrees centigrade. And they were measuring about that 20 degree rise on the bulb surface. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit warmer inside. We put a data point on to the graph here as to where the temperature would be in that open fixture. Then we go up into uh, the f uh, point where we think the uh, parts might be in that enclosed fixture and put a point there. And you can see, of course, the reliability drops from years to well under a year. And of course, as I speculate, is why the vendors uh, are not eager in, in uh, you using these LED bulbs in the enclosed fixture because the service life will be um, quite poor. Okay, power consumption. Uh, the packaging says 10 watts. As you can see, it's uh, even more disappointing than that. It's actually uh, almost 12 watts. So uh, this is one of the least efficient bulbs I've uh, torn down. And the power factor is close to unity, so there's power factor correction in the bulb. Okay, uh, obviously I've uh, sawn the top off. A really wonderfully clear polycarbonate. And uh, uh, below that is this um, diffuser, I presume, which uh, is trying to create a light pattern. And uh, then looking straight down on the bulb, of course, you can see uh, an aluminum substrate with uh, 24 placements of uh, LEDs and uh, fairly uh, unremarkable construction. Okay, uh, it took the two screws off of the emitter array and then uh, this little sleeve slides off. It's um, metal and uh, we have sort of the cartridge construction, uh, the gray material being potting compound and uh, the circuit board that does the AC to DC conversion uh, buried inside of it. Okay, uh, an AC to DC converter, AC input on the left, uh, and the DC output onto those two pins on the right there. Um, it's a single-sided circuit board, and uh, it uses a technique where the surface mount components are first glue dotted down, the board's flipped over, the through hole parts are stuffed, then it's wave soldered. Uh, that's certainly a technique that's been around for a, lo a lot of decades. Um, there is a filter over here to prevent conductive emissions back into the power line. Uh, looks like an isolated design. The transformer here, and I can't get any continuity between the, the two DC connector outputs and the AC. Um, the filter capacitors are here. They're uh, rated to 125 degrees centigrade. Uh, the uh, Back here we, of course, have the full wave rectifier. And then, interestingly enough, I was looking for the controller I see, and I believe it must be this item here. I haven't seen, seen anything quite like it. Um, I'm presuming that uh, this is not just a relaxation oscillator because the dimmability of the bulb was relatively good, so I'm going to have to desolder this part and see if I can get any readings off of it as to what it might be. Uh, otherwise, uh, it appears to be a fairly straightforward topology. Okay, well, this is a little controller I see. Uh, you can see it's got a lot of leads coming out of it, so... Um, I'm sure there's a relatively sophisticated integrated circuit in it. Interesting packaging. I haven't seen quite like this for a long time. Usually the controllers are a surface mount, and obviously this is a through-hole device. So, uh, interesting. Another controller I haven't uh, run into yet.